in the glitzy era of 1950s Hollywood, How to Marry a Millionaire graced the silver screen, offering audiences a glamorous escape into the lives of three ambitious women on a quest for love and fortune. This classic romantic comedy, directed by Jean Negulesco, takes a playful jab at societal expectations and the pursuit of affluence. Starring the iconic trio of Marilyn Monroe, Betty Grable, and Lauren Bacall, the film not only showcases their individual charm, but also explores the timeless theme of love versus practicality. As you revisit this cinematic gem, consider the roles played by these leading ladies. Which character resonated with you the most? Was it Monroe's endearing yet naive Pola, Grable's pragmatic but hopeful Loco, or Bacall's sophisticated and rational Shatsy? Each portrayal adds a unique layer to the narrative, leaving viewers with a delightful conundrum of personalities. Now, we invite you to share your cherished memories and personal experiences associated with How to Marry a Millionaire. Do you have a favorite scene or a special connection to the storyline? We'd love to hear your stories and thoughts in the comments below. Immerse yourself in the allure of vintage Hollywood and let the nostalgia of How to Marry a Millionaire bring back fond memories. Share your insights and join the conversation your cinematic tales await. How to Marry a Millionaire, a 1953 film directed by Jean Negulesco, is a classic romantic comedy that follows three ambitious women in New York City played by Marilyn Monroe, Betty Grable, and Lauren Bacall as they devise a plan to snag wealthy husbands. The trio rents a lavish penthouse to attract eligible bachelors, leading to a series of humorous misadventures and romantic entanglements. The film's witty dialogue and the chemistry among the main cast contribute to its enduring appeal. The characters navigate love and finance in a lighthearted manner, showcasing the social dynamics of the era. Despite its straightforward premise, the film is notable for its satirical take on societal expectations surrounding marriage and wealth. How to Marry a Millionaire remains a classic in the romantic comedy genre, influencing subsequent films and contributing to the cultural conversation around relationships and aspirations. Its enduring popularity is a testament to the timeless charm of its narrative and performances, making it a must-watch for fans of classic Hollywood cinema. Pola, played by Marilyn Monroe, made an iconic statement in the red swimsuit scene. You know, of course, that diamonds are a girl's best friend. Interestingly, Monroe later performed Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, released the same year as How to Marry a Millionaire. Working with Marilyn Monroe presented challenges, according to Lauren Bacall. Despite Monroe's insecurity and dependence on her acting coach Natasha Lytus for approval, Bacall acknowledged Monroe's lack of malice. The actress, while fearful and often late, focused on herself during scenes, making each take an uncertainty. Beyond the backstage dynamics, the film's financial success was notable. In 1953, it ranked as the fifth highest grossing Hollywood production. This success is a testament to the enduring popularity of How to Marry a Millionaire and its impact on the cinematic landscape. In How to Marry a Millionaire, released in the early days of Cinemascope, the age dynamics between characters might surprise you. Waldo Brewster, played by Fred Clark, was intended to be considerably older than Loco Dempsey, portrayed by Betty Grable. However, the reality was different. Clark was only two years senior to Grable. This film marked 20th Century Fox's first foray into Cinemascope, a technology that would soon become a standard in the industry. Notably, it followed the robe's release, another milestone in the cinematic landscape. Behind the scenes, Lauren Bacall and Betty Grable displayed generosity towards Marilyn Monroe, despite challenges in their interactions. Nunnally Johnson, taking notice, acknowledged the efforts of the two Bettys to befriend Monroe. However, he described Monroe as somewhat distant, comparing talking to her to a conversation underwater. Monroe's dedication to her craft, studying lines and appearance, was evident, making her a complex figure on set. These behind-the-scenes dynamics, coupled with the film's technical achievements and the unexpected age dynamics on screen, add layers to the narrative of how to marry a millionaire, creating an intriguing blend of on-set experiences and on-screen illusions. Marilyn Monroe, already a star from Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, found a friend in Betty Grable on the set of How to Marry a Millionaire. Grable's encouraging words, Honey, I've had mine. Go get yours, reflect the camaraderie behind the scenes. Meanwhile, the movie features the love theme Y'all Never Know, originally sung by Alice Faye in 1943. 
this song takes on new meaning as Betty Grable listens to her, then husband Harry James on the radio in Maine. Interestingly, it becomes a significant element in Grable's on-screen romance with Rory Calhoun. In a technical milestone, How to Marry a Millionaire stands out as one of the first films with a stereo recorded score. This innovation adds a layer of richness to the cinematic experience, contributing to the movie's unique place in film history. From friendships blossoming on set to the intertwining of past musical hits, How to Marry a Millionaire captures not only the essence of its era, but also the collaborative spirit of Hollywood legends. These off-screen dynamics, combined with technical advancements, enhance the film's legacy in the world of classic cinema. And How to Marry a Millionaire, Lauren Bacall's character, Shatsy, subtly nods to her real-life husband, Humphrey Bogart, expressing her fondness for older men. This connection adds a personal touch to the film, intertwining on-screen and off-screen relationships. Betty Grable faced a personal challenge during filming when her daughter Jessica had a fall at home. Despite the busy set, Marilyn Monroe took the time to call Grable, showcasing a genuine concern for her co-star's well-being. This incident highlights the camaraderie among the cast members beyond the movie's scripted scenes. Surprisingly, despite being three of Hollywood's leading actresses, the cast of How to Marry a Millionaire got along exceptionally well on set. Anecdotes such as Betty Grable personally painting Marilyn Monroe's toenails before a photo shoot exemplify the camaraderie and support among the leading ladies, transcending any competitive atmosphere. These behind-the-scenes glimpses offer a unique perspective on the making of the film, demonstrating the genuine connections and care among the cast members. Such personal touches contribute to the enduring appeal of How to Marry a Millionaire and provide a glimpse into the collaborative spirit that shaped this classic film. As the silver screen curtain descends, we bid adieu to the captivating allure of How to Marry a Millionaire, a timeless masterpiece that weaves a rich tapestry of love, laughter, and a dash of Hollywood glamour. As you reflect on the celluloid memories spun by this cinematic gem, consider the threads that bind you to its narrative charm. Perhaps it's the magnetic charisma of the leading cast luring you into the whirlwind of their romantic escapades. Or maybe it's the backdrop of a bygone era where elegance and sophistication ruled the screen, leaving an indelible imprint on your cinephile soul. Take a moment to unravel your own personal connection with this classic, relishing the scenes that spark a smile or the lines that echo in the corridors of your memory. Share with us your reflections, your favorite moments, or the musings that dance in your mind whenever the title How to Marry a Millionaire graces a conversation. In this shared space of cinematic nostalgia, let us celebrate the cinematic magic that unites us across time and space. Your thoughts are the stars that illuminate this communal sky of admiration for a movie that has transcended generations. Thank you for indulging in this cinematic reverie with us. Your time and reflections are the jewels in the crown of our shared appreciation for the silver screen classics. Until we meet again on the reel of another captivating story, keep the magic of how to marry a millionaire alive in your heart. Cinematically yours. <laughs>